In this video, I'll be talking about the real numbers, how they can be classified in a couple of different ways, and some ways that we can graphically represent them. The real numbers are just the numbers that we're used to using in our everyday life, the kind of things that pop up all over the place. Like the integers. The integers are just the counting numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. They're negatives, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on, and also the number 0. The positive integers, like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, the counting numbers, are also referred to as the natural numbers. The natural numbers we often denote with this symbol n here, and the integers with this symbol z. When we divide two integers, something you might normally refer to as maybe a fraction, we have what's called a rational number. Rational numbers are just ratios of integers, things like 7 on 3, or perhaps 1 on 3, or minus 2 on 7. You can also identify a rational number as a decimal which has a periodic or cyclic set of numbers in it, like this one here, 0 0.34, 34, 34, and so on forever, or something like 0 0.333, 3, and so on forever again, which we know is one third, or a decimal that terminates, like minus 0.4. These are all rational numbers. As well as that, they can all be represented in some way as an integer uh, ratio, like 7 on 3 and 1 on 3. The numbers which can't be written in this way, which can't be written as the fraction or ratio of two integers, are referred to as the irrationals, because they're not rational. These are things like, you might remember pi from the formula for the area of a circle, a number that we'll see a bit more of, e, 2.718281, and so on and so on forever, and numbers like the square root of 2, and it's negative of course. These are irrational numbers, remember they can't be written as a ratio of two integers. Now if you put all of those together, you've got what we call the real numbers, the numbers that we deal with in everyday life. Sometimes in mathematics, in more advanced settings, we'll also talk about what are called complex numbers. Now complex numbers are not real numbers, and they kind of come about when you talk about finding square roots of negative values, things that you might have in the past said are not possible to do. Now combinations of real numbers and these square roots of negatives, they're called complex numbers, but we won't really be touching on them uh, here. All right, let's take a look at an example, and we're going to classify these following eight numbers. Now what we're going to find is some of these only fit into one of the three, four classifications from back here, complex numbers, irrationals, uh, rationals and integers, Oh, we might add in naturals as well. Um, but others will actually fall into a, a number of categories. So let's have a go at it. The first one we've got here is minus one on three. Now that's minus one, that's an integer, and three is an integer or a natural number, and we've got a ratio of those two things. So going back to our classifications, that is gonna be a rational number. So we can write that one in straight away. A is rational. That's not irrational, of course. It's also not a natural number, and it's not a integer, because it's a ratio of integers. Now looking at B, we've got minus 1.78. Now that's in decimal form, but notice that the decimal terminates. So going back to our classifications, terminating decimals again are rational numbers. So we can pop that one in, rational. Looking at C, we've got the number 5. 5 is a counting number, so we know that that's a natural, natural number. It's also an integer, of course, because all of the naturals are integers. And if you think about it as 5 on 1, we could also say it's a rational as well, if we like. So it fits into all of those categories. Now if we look at D, there we've got the square root of 3. The square root of 3, that's not a number that we can break down, like the square root of 4, which is of course 2. The square root of 3 is another one of those irrational numbers. It can't be written as the ratio of integers. E is just a constant multiple, minus 2 of the number pi. Pi is irrational, so a constant multiple of it here is also going to be an irrational number. Now in f we've got the number 0. If we look back, 0 is just one of the integers, so we can say that that's an integer. And g, 0.333. Now these dots just mean the same numbers repeating over and over again forever. So that's a non uh, terminating decimal, but it does repeat. Now remember, that's just one on three. Now that repeating structure means that we've got there a rational number. And finally in H minus 79, that's just the negative of a counting number, so that's an integer. Now something that I have forgotten, can you think what it is? Okay, all of these, every single one of them, 
is a real number. None of those were complex. None of them had square roots of negatives in them. So those are all real numbers. Now something that's really good about numbers is that we can use a variety of different ways to visualize them. And visualizing, basically meaning graphically representing or something you can look at, um, is a way that we can represent numbers and compare their values. So one of the most um, elementary ways of doing this is to use a thing called the number line. So there's a little example here of a number line that you can see. And we've got on there just a straight line and little notches all the way along. You've probably seen something like this before. We put in an origin point here at zero, and then along the way, in either direction, we can put down numbers, real numbers, like uh, the integers, the natural numbers. We can put in rational numbers. We can even put in irrational numbers, if you like. Now, we can use this number line to compare values of real numbers, things that are to the left of a particular number. Let's say we had one here called A. Anything to the left of that is less than it, and anything to the right is bigger than or greater than it. So we've got a, a relationship building sort of picture going on here. Now in one of the other videos where we look at relating real numbers, we'll actually look at some symbols to represent that and look into it in a bit more depth. Let's just quickly have an example though. Construct a number line and place the following numbers on it. So we've got there 40, minus 40, minus 60, 0 and 10. So we've got some negatives, some positives, the 0 point. I'm just going to put down a nice straight line there. Remember, we put some arrows in because it goes on forever in either direction. I'm going to place in a zero point, and that's my first number done. And then I know I've got to go to minus 60 on the negative side, so I might put that in straight away. Now, looking at it, the same distance on either side should represent the same amount of number. So 60 over to the right, that's roughly the same distance. And I can pop in now 40, which is probably a bit more than half, around about there, minus 40. A similar distance across the other way and 10 a quarter of the distance along there so we've got all our numbers popped in and there's our number line now I'm sure that everyone's seen a graph but let's just look at it uh, as uh, in a little bit more basic way basically a graph is made by intersecting uh, two number number lines so sometimes we're interested in looking at pairs of numbers that are related in some way. Now you'll see that all the time in science and engineering and business and finance, uh, all over the place, in all sorts of places. So that's what we want to look at here. Now these pairs of numbers often occur when you've got data that's tabulated as two columns. Uh, for example, um, the day of the year and the exchange rate for a particular currency or something like that. And you can plot those points on these intersecting pairs of number lines. Now this kind of representation is what we call a Cartesian plane. You'll probably hear some other names for it as well, XY plane, uh, all sorts of things like that, depending on the, the context of what you're looking at. Let's have a look at an example for that one. I want to use a Cartesian plane to represent the following pairs of numbers, these ones here, uh, graphically. And I want to make sure that I label the axes so that I know what the graph is actually, or this Cartesian plane is a picture of. And I want to put the points on there and label those as well, including appropriate scales. We like to have the scales representing, um, you know, real distances in some sense. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is set up these intersecting number lines I've been referring to, or as we sometimes call them, axes. Now I'm going to put one down here and call that the horizontal axis. That's one of my number lines. And I'll put another one going vertically, vertical axis or the other number line, if you like. I'm going to represent the age column of data down here on the horizontal in weeks. And up here on the vertical, we'll put that as the height, uh, H, which is in centimetres. Whatever this represents, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a, a growing plant, the height of a plant. Now, I need to have age going from 0 to, to up to 5. So I'm going to put 5 over here. And scatter in some points at appropriate distances. So one, two, three, four. And you can see, you know, give or take for my uh, rough drawing, the spaces in between each of those is equal. Now on the height axis or number line, uh, it starts at three, but I'm going to start it at zero to say, you know, it could have been zero when it was zero weeks old. I'm not sure. And I need to go up to at least 12. So I'm going to put 12 up here. Halfway down would be six. So that'd be nine in there and three in here. And down here at the origin where the two lines intersect, that's our origin we call it, and that'd be the zero, zero point. Now it's perfectly fine that these distances here are the same, but the numbers are different. 
uh, as long as there's consistency on each axis. So everything's set up now. What we can now go on and do is take each one of these pairs or rows in our data and plot that in some way on our intersecting uh, number lines. So the first one we've got is an age of 0.5, which is around about here, and a height of three centimeters. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna put a point there, that's my first data point. The next one then is an age of one and a height of five. So age of one and move up to a height of five is probably about there. 1.5 and six, so up here, two and eight, so we can go up to roughly there, 3 and 11, so 3 and up to 11, 5 and 12 for the final one. So that's about there. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to do there. We've got a Cartesian plane, these intersecting number lines, and we've plotted uh, what we call coordinates or ordered pairs or data points based on this table of data on the left. Now what I could do if I wanted to go on and do something a little bit different, a little bit extra, this isn't really asked for in the question, but I could just draw a line through those points as a bit of a, a bit of a guess really of what this relationship is between age and height. And maybe if you think about it, remember I was saying this might be a plant, that kind of makes sense. When it's zero weeks old, it's got no height and it starts to grow up, we might call that linearly. But then as it gets a bit older, it sort of stops growing. It gets reaches its maximum height. So from then on, it's pretty much tailed off and it's sitting at about 12 centimetres high. Anyway, that's our first look at uh, classifying and visualising real numbers. So in this video, we've looked at, remember, some types of numbers, how to classify the real numbers, integers, naturals, irrationals and rationals. And we've also looked at a couple of graphical representations, the number line and the intersecting number lines of the Cartesian plane. That's it for this video.